Good evening. In this video I'm going to show you how to construct a lateral surface of this metal scoop shown here in exercise 1. The metal scoop is made out of a cylinder of metal of diameter 56 um, cut out with these two uh, radius 28 millimeter curves to give it a, a nice aesthetic look. All right, so the, the, the scoop is at its longest, that's 112 millimeters long, with a di diameter of 56 millimeters. So first of all, we need to draw, we need to redraw this side, this front view, and we're gonna have to draw a side view as well in order to be able to construct the lateral surface. Okay, so let's go to LibreCAD. Now, there's a number of different ways that we can do this, but I'm going to start with using um, the horizontal and vertical line tools. First of all, let's make sure we're drawing on the visible layer. And for my first line, I want to snap to the grid. And my first line is going to be a horizontal line with a length of 112 millimeters. And I can snap that to that point there. All right, then the next line is going to be a vertical line. And that is a 56 millimeters long line over here. And I don't want to snap to the grid, so I'm going to turn that off. Okay, let's just zoom in a bit over here and get a bit of a better view. And then the next line is a, is a horizontal line again from this point here. And let's just quickly check what the length was. So it's 112 minus 28 and minus another 28. So 228 is 56. 112 minus 56. So I want a length that is 112 minus 56. And I don't want it going off in that direction, so I'm going to change this to snap to the end of the line. So that's going to come in here. All right, so that gives me the basic outline of the, of the front view of the scoop. Uh, in order to find the, like, the, the center points of the two arcs to finish this off, I'm going to draw some construction lines. So let's draw a horizontal construction line that is 28 millimeters long. And I'm going to put that across there. And then I'm going to draw a vertical construction line that is 56 millimeters long. And I'm going to put that across there. Okay. That's then going to give me what I need for those arcs. Uh, one other thing that I'm going to put in as well is I'm going to put in a center line. And again, this is a horizontal line. And I'm going to make it the full length of 112 millimeters. Um, yep, and I wanted to snap that way. But in this case, I wanted to actually snap to the midpoint of this vertical line. So I'm going to turn on the midpoint snap. And it will then snap to that line, to that point there. All right, so that's my horizontal center line. Okay, let's draw the arcs. And the tool for this is the center point angles tool. Just make sure I'm drawing on the visible layer again. So my center point is here. The um, radius is this distance. And then I want to start down the bottom here and come up to there. That's the first one. And then the second one, the center point is going to be over here. That's the radius. And I want to start again at this point and end up down here. All right. And if I turn off my construction lines, we now have the front view of that metal scoop, which looks exactly like that. OK. All right. Then the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to, to draw a a side view of this. So uh, it does the, the, the question doesn't specify whether it needs to be a left side view or a right side view. And in fact, it makes no difference because in both views, it's going to be just a circle with a diameter of 56. Um, I'm going to put it on, on this side just because I'm going to, I find that's going to be a little bit more convenient, but it really doesn't make a difference. Okay, so let me draw some construction lines just to help locate that circle. And I'm going to draw a horizontal line. I'm going to make it a 56. And I'll put it there. And then I'm going to put in a vertical line of 56 as well. Mm. 
but we want it to snap to the start of a line, so we can put that there. Alright, and then I want a circle, but this can go on the visible layer. Um, center and a point, and I can snap to the center line, the midpoint of that vertical line as the center of the circle, and then I can specify either the top or the bottom of that line as the, the point that give, defines the radius. Alright, so that then is my side view of this scoop. When we're looking at it from the side, whether it's from the left-hand side or from the right-hand side, we can't see the effect of this curve over here. We can only just see the, the outside of the cylinder, which is a circle from the end view. Alright, so now I need to construct the lateral surface. I need to develop the lateral surface of this cylinder, of the scoop. Now, in most questions where you have to develop a lateral surface, particularly of a cylinder, the, 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 the cylinder is standing up vertically and the, the lateral surface would be developed off typically towards the right hand side. In this case, the cylinder is lying down horizontally, so we're going to be developing our surface going up vertically. So the first thing, let's let's just get a starting point. So let's get, draw some construction lines again. I'm going to draw a vertical line, and 56 is good. So I'm just going to start from there. Um, and then I'm going to put in a horizontal construction line of the full width of 112, which we can put over here. So that's going to be the starting point of my um, developed surface. We then need to draw a line vertically up in this direction that is equivalent to or is equal to the perimeter of this circle. Many textbook authors refer to that as the stretch out line. It's the line that, that defines the base of our um, developed surface. So how long is that line? Well, let's draw it as a construction line and I want a vertical construction line which is going to start at this point and we want it to be the starting point. So it's going to go up in this direction, but it's not going to be a length of 112. It needs to be the diameter, 56, times the value pi. And LibreCAD makes it very easy for us to do that calculation without having to go separately to a calculator or something, because we can type calculations directly into these dimension boxes. And in fact, it recognizes the variable pi. So, there's my stretch outline, and if I can click on that side, and I'm going to draw another one on that side. And let me auto zoom to see the whole picture. That is then the stretch outline that I need. Okay. All right, now to develop a surface, we have to divide this cylinder up into a number of segments, which we will then map across onto our um, developed surface. Um, Typically, in if we were drawing this by hand, we might have divide each quadrant up into possibly three um, segments. Obviously, the more segments that you divide it up into, the more accurate res your results are going to be. But at the same time, it's going to be a little bit more work. Now, fortunately, when we're drawing in CAD, um, CAD tools make it easy to do this. So the amount of additional work for, for a few additional segments is not a lot. So... I'm going to go with uh, six segments in each quadrant, which will give me a total of 24 segments around the circle. And CAD has a very useful tool that makes this quite easy. I'm going to copy this vertical line and I'm going to rotate it um, by 15 degrees each time. And I'm going to rotate it 12 times around to get all the way around the circle. So I'm going to use, I've selected the line and I'm going to use the rotate, rotate tool. And it asks me to specify the rotation center. and I'm just going to snap to the middle of that line. Then it asks me to specify the reference point. So I'm going to click on the bottom of this line over here. And then it's asked me for a target point. Now, as you can see, as I'm moving my cursor, there's a number of different places that it snaps to. And it really doesn't matter at this stage because in fact, we're going to change the angle in the dialog box that comes up in a minute. So I'm just going to snap to a horizontal point here, and this dialog box pops up. And as you can see, it's it's 
by default it's entered a value of 90 here because that's what I snapped to over here. But I don't have to leave it as 90. In fact, I'm going to change that to 50. Um, so 180 degrees from the bottom to the top divided by 15 gives me 12 points. Um, I'm going to just copy this line 11 times. I've already got one, so I need 12 in total, so I need 11 additional copies. So I'm going to leave that as 11, and I'm going to say OK. And now I have exactly what I, what I needed. I've got a number of lines, each 15 degrees apart, that divide up the circle into a total of 24 segments. If we start numbering it, let's say at the top here as zero, when we go around, we're going to go to zero, and then that's one, two, three, four, five, six for the first quadrant, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve for the first semicircle, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then 24 is where we get back to the starting point. All right, now I need to project each of these intersections back to this curve here because this is the curve that's going to be a little tricky to to plot in the developed surface that we're working on. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this over a bit so I can see and I'm going to draw a horizontal construction line using the two-point tool from this top of this line to this corner over there. Okay. That gives me a starting line. Then I'm going to use the parallel through point tool to copy this line through each of the points. And I'm just going to turn off midpoint and intersection so that I've got only the snap to the end point of a line. So I'm going to make lines that are parallel to this one and I'm going to go through the end of this, this line and then that one and repeat all the way around this circle. Okay, so now I have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 horizontal lines. Then what I need to do is I need to then project a vertical line up into this area where I'm going to develop the surface through each of the intersections of these horizontal lines and these this curve on the front of the scoop. So again, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to use the auto zoom tool, zoom out a little bit. And I want to just change the length of this left hand line here to go all the way down to the last line at the bottom here. So I'm going to use the trim tool. And I'm going to zoom in a bit to make sure I'm trimming to the right line. I'm going to use that very bottom line as my limiting entity. And then the tool that I, the line that I want to trim is that one. All right, escape out of that tool. Now again, I want to use the the parallel through point tool to make parallel copies of this vertical line going through each of these intersections. Okay, so parallel through point tool, and I choose this one as my my um, entity to which I'm going to be parallel. And I'm going to zoom in so that I can see what we're doing here. So this is the this line that we've got already goes through this corner here, through the very bottom line. The next one is going to go through this. Okay, and I just need to turn intersections back on and turn off endpoints because I want to be able to snap to each of these intersections. Now, the second inter the first intersection is this very bottom corner. The second intersection is the intersection of this second horizontal line and the curve. But as you can see, I've clicked on there and I've created a new line, but it's actually directly on top of that first line. We'll come back to that point in a minute. All right, then the second, the, the third line is going to be the intersection of this curve and this third horizontal line. And although they are two separate lines, you can now see two separate lines here, they are very close together. We're going to have to be very careful when we draw the actual um, constructed curve because of the fact that we've got lines that are very close to each other. Going forward, the lines are a little bit further apart, so it's fairly easy. So I can snap to this intersection, and then this one, and then that one, and then the, the, the midpoint between the two curves, and we can go to that one. And let's just move up a little bit, and we can snap through that one, that one, that one, the second last one, 
and the last one which basically are lying on top of each other again. Okay, let's escape out of that tool. All right, so now if we zoom right out again, I have the front view of my metal scoop, I have the side view, I have broken up that side view into, in this case, 12, 13 horizontal lines, um, projected them across to this curve, and at the intersection of each of those lines in this curve, I have projected vertical lines going up towards the where I'm going to develop the surface over here. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to Remember, we defined that this line from here to here is the stretch out line. It's equivalent to the perimeter of this circle, pi times the diameter 56. Now, this perimeter we've mentioned is divided up into 24 points, starting from zero going around to number 24. Um, I need horizontal lines across here that are evenly spaced going from, again, zero all the way up to 24. Um, there are a number of ways that you can you could do this when if you were drawing this drawing by hand, but again, CAD gives us a very powerful tool for doing this. We're going to use the parallel tool. We want to draw lines that are parallel to this one, and we want to space them evenly all the way up to over here. And I need 24 copies of that. So I'm going to choose the parallel tool, all right? And I want a total of 24 lines and the distance is going to be the diameter which is pi times 56 divided by 24 and that's how far each line is going to be apart from each other okay now this is where it gets interesting with this tool as I move my cursor around as it gets close to a line or an arc I'll show you in a minute it draws parallel lines to that. It's going to draw 24 parallel lines to that. So as I get close to this one, it wants to draw 24 lines going off towards the left, all spaced evenly. I can even do that on the circle, and it gives me 24 evenly spaced circles that are parallel to that initial one. That's not what I want for this particular drawing. I want them to be parallel to this horizontal line over here. Make sure your cursor is slightly above the line, not below. We don't want the new lines to be going off downwards, we want them to be going up, uh, off up vertically, upwards. And when I click, then those lines are drawn, and I can escape out of that tool. And you can see that it's nice and evenly spaced, and the last line intersects correctly with the end of my stretch out line here on the right hand side. Okay, now we can just quickly go back to the, to the exercise, and you see that it says Develop a lateral surface of the scoop starting at line AB. AB is this one across the very top of the scoop here. It's the shortest line on of this curve. Okay, so let's see. So we're going to start over here. So this edge and this edge are going to be the shortest possible line. So that makes it easy. So let's do those lines as visible lines. And I'm going to just use the two-point tool. And I'm going to zoom in a bit so that I'm actually selecting the right line. I don't want to select this of these two lines that are close to each other. I want to select the one that's on the left. I want to select the one that's on the right. So I'm going to make sure that my cursor is slightly towards the right of those two lines. And I'm going to click to select. And then I want to go horizontally across to this point and vertically up right to this corner over here and then across to this corner here as well. Alrighty. Does it not want to snap to this? Um, I need the endpoints turned on, not intersections. Okay. And it snaps to that. And I can scape out of that. Okay. So that is now the, what we could call the bottom part of that developed surface. Okay. The straight line part, the easy part. Okay, so I've drawn those three straight lines. Now I'm going to need a curve, and it starts over here, and then by the time it gets to halfway, it's going to be at this end, and then it's going to curve back down to here. So it's going to curve something from here, uh, going off towards the left until it hits this midpoint, and then it's going to come back down to this point here. Okay, now 
Again, CAD has a useful tool that helps us to draw uh, nice smooth curves through a set of intersections, and that is the tool called Spline Through Points. Okay, and it's it, we we basically create a smooth curve by joining up a set of points. And in this case, those points are the intersections of these horizontal and vertical lines. We just have to make sure that we get the right intersections. Okay. All right, so let's zoom in here a bit so that it makes it easy that we can see. Now, remember what I said, that the first point, all right, let's just go back down to, right down to the, this curve again. Remember, and I'm going to zoom in. So remember that the corner point here, let's call that um, intersection 0, is right on the corner here. Then intersection 1 is the intersection with this next horizontal line, but it's lying on the same vertical line as intersection 0. Then intersection 2 I don't look like I've got, it looks like I've missed one. Sorry about that, let me put that in. So I'm going to draw a construction line, I want it parallel through point. Parallel to that one, oops, I don't want 24 of them, I only want one. But I want it to be through that point there. Okay. So I've got two lines very close to each other, similarly to what I have on the other end over here. Now, I think that the problem with that is that I've made a mistake. Let's just zoom right out and zoom in over here. I suspect that, yes, you see my this visible line goes to the second one of these two when it should in fact stop at the first one. Okay, so let's delete this one. Not that one. The visible line, and I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to just quickly redraw it. Back to that point over there. Okay. All right, sorry about that. That was a little bit of a mistake, but that's we've sorted that out now. Okay, so intersection 0 is on this this very first, most right-hand side vertical line, that's going to be intersection 0. Intersection 1 will also be on the same vertical line. And then, intersection 2 will be on this second vertical line, and then intersection 3 will be on the next vertical line. Okay, so, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and then I'm going to draw, on the visible layer, spline through points. And I'm going to start here. That's a 0, and then that's 1, and then that one is 2. And let's come down a bit. That is 3, 4, 5, and 6 is the midpoint, okay, which looks right. 6, then 7. Seven, that is eight, nine, and let's zoom in quite a bit more this time. That is ten, and then eleven and twelve are on the very left hand side of the vert uh, very left hand vertical line. Eleven and twelve, and in fact thirteen, because now we're going back around the curve. Thirteen. And then fourteen is this second one on, on the on the right hand side, and then 15, and we can zoom out a bit, 15, 16, 17, 18 is the midpoint again, and then 19, 20, 21, and let's just zoom in a bit and get in the right place. Okay, we're going to go to this second last vertical line, and then the second last intersection is on the on the last vertical line, and the very last intersection is also on the last vertical line. And then we press escape to escape out of the tool, and it finishes it off. And let's auto zoom, 
and that is the shape of the curve. Um, now I just noticed that I made a mistake over here as well. This horizontal visible line is slightly too long. It also ends on this second line instead of ending on the first line. So I'm just going to delete that one and redraw it using the two-point tool. Snapping not to there, but to there. And across. Sorry. To there. And then let's escape out of that. Auto zoom and turn off our construction lines. And that is then the completed development of the lateral surface of that um, metal scoop. If you were to roll this surface up and join this edge over here to that edge over there and make sure that that was at the top, you would get a side view that looks exactly like this metal scoop. You would then need to cut out a piece of metal um, equal to this circle over here and weld it onto the back of the of the scoop there and you would have a, a metal scoop that you could use for scooping up coal or something like that. Alright, I hope you find this, this helpful. Thanks for watching.